All right. Hello, everybody. I am Stephen Britton, and this today is... Ooh, a little wobbly on the camera there. Today is Friday, October the 13th. What a scary idea. I'm doing a webcast on Friday the 13th. Thus, it probably explains why it's starting half an hour, 35 minutes after when I said it was going to start, even though I said it was going to start an hour late. Anyway, just the way my life runs, I guess. So, as you've probably seen, what it says on the video feed itself is, what is terrorism? Really? And the reason that I've decided to ask this question is, it's one that's really been nagging at me for a while. What is terrorism? And why, why um, are people so engaged and worried and why is terrorism such a big deal within our um, society nowadays? I'm just adjusting the microphone in case you heard that. <laughs> you see, a lot of the time people, when people think, I've got some notes I'm going to refer to, but people, when they think terrorism, they tend to think bombs exploding in faraway places. They tend to think of they tend to think of all kinds of things such as that. They tend to think of Muslims. They tend to think of radical Islam. They tend to think of violence and violent acts. Um, and that's that's really at the core what terrorism is. Even using the word terrorism tends to evoke an emotional response because it there was a terrorist act in such and such a place at such and such a time and such and such a people number of people were victims of it and everyone goes stir crazy R rightly so i have to admit and certainly events like 911 were definitely terrorist acts and that's really what brought it to the forefront for me 911 um, like many, I remember exactly where I was and exactly what I was doing when I heard that the aircraft had hit the building and it started the day uh, just going downhill for pretty much everybody, including me. We spent a lot of time listening to the radio that day and over the next few days just trying to figure out what was going on, who did it, why it was done, and all that. So, there is definitely that aspect to terrorism. But let's, let's talk about this for a minute, because you, you, you think, like, a lot of these acts are senseless. And I think that's partially by design. The senselessness of the terrorist act means it's designed not to make sense and designed to increase the amount of chaos that's happening which is part of the whole whole thing because when people are disoriented and disabled dis destabilized then they are far more frightened than otherwise because it is a human trait to like consistency and stability so there's there's that aspect to it as well and of course religious terrorism well you know if I die in the process of committing a terrorist act, well, I'm just gonna I'm gonna end up in heaven and gonna reap my rewards of my 72 virgins, and and so on. And I deliberately chose to refer to the 72 virgins because most terrorism, most violent terrorism nowadays, is in fact being perpetrated by radicals Islamists, and the ideology, the political ideology surrounding radical Islam certainly is something to be concerned about. Now that doesn't mean if you're a Muslim I think you're a terrorist because quite obviously I don't. Um, personally I've had a lot of relationships with um, a very large number of Muslim people. We agree on much, we disagree on much, and we have a lot of laughs in the middle. The Muslims that I personally know are a great bunch of people. I have not met a more welcoming and more hospitable group of people. And quite frankly, these people that I know who are Muslim are very respectful of the diversity of faith within not only their own community, 
don't forget, there's Shia, there's Sunni, there's Sufi, there's Ahmadiyya, there's um, Ismaili. There's a whole bunch of Islamic schools within the Islamic um, belief set. And, of course, so they're respectful amongst themselves because they themselves come from a wide range of belief systems and schools of thought. But as well, they're very respectful of the Christians and the atheists amongst their circles of friends as well. So my point is, and I'm going to get back to terrorism here, but my point is my personal experience contradicts what a lot of people say about Muslims in general. So I don't think it's fair to say that Muslim equals terrorist. I think it's fair to say that Islam may be predisposed to terrorist acts based on the ideology associated with it. But I think a lot of people around the world have a very strong moral sense of right and wrong. And I think that is a guiding influence of most people that you come in contact with. And that is one of the things that I wanted to talk about a bit later on as well regarding fighting terrorism. How to fight terrorism and how to deal with it because the only way to really circumvent and defeat terrorism is to not be afraid because and to and to live your life unaffected because quite frankly that is the aim of terrorism modification of behavior or also known as influence through fear because think about it what are the goals of terrorism? Instill fear. Effect change. Well, what kind of change? Destabilize. Why? Especially if the terrorist ends up dead, what good does that do him or her? Other than send them to wherever heaven is and have their 72 virgins. What do they do once they've made one of those virgins not a virgin? Do they get another one to replace it? Or well, Anyway, off topic. So, what's the underlying issue of terrorism? What's the underlying reason? And that is to instill fear. And the, um, the purpose of instilling fear is what? Well, the purpose of instilling fear, I think, is to affect change. That means to influence people. So, yeah, most acts of terrorism, most of the time when one talks about terrorism, one is talking about violent acts, murderous acts, acts which harm people in order to instill fear. Intimidation act, intimidation tactics. And that is very true. And most of the time that is what you're going to um, experience with regards to terrorism. But let's think about this for a second. If terrorism is nothing more then modifying or influencing people through fear, is it possible to be a terrorist without being violent? Can you do a terrorist act that doesn't involve violence? I suggest you can. I think if you want to strip it down to its base roots, terrorism is anything that is designed to frighten somebody else. And you don't have to be violent to do it. All you have to do is frighten the person. And look about what, think about this. What do we see happening during Canadian political campaigns? In 2004, the Liberal Party of Canada released an ad which made it to air it fe featured a whole bunch of things that Stephen Harper would do. And I realize I'm going back a number of years here, but this is important. It featured a whole bunch of things that Stephen Harper would do, which included saying things like Stephen Harper said he would send carriers to the Persian Gulf. We don't have aircraft carriers. They left it as carriers. They didn't specify troop carriers. He said that he would change the abortion, uh, abortion laws to eliminate a woman's right to choose, which he never actually said he would do. He said he would um, eliminate the gun registry. That is true. And he did. Good on him for doing so. But the image 
that they showed on the screen. And this is the this is the core of it here, right here. The image that they showed on the screen at the time that they were saying this wasn't just a picture of a firearm or someone down at a gun range. It was a picture of a handgun, which was not affected by the long gun registry. Handguns have been registered in Canada for forever, as far as I know. You can't even get one without being a member of a gun club. And I had a beeper go off on my phone. What do you know? I've even silenced the thing, so I don't know why it's all of a sudden doing that. Doesn't matter. The image that they showed was a gun pointing at the screen. So the muzzle was, was pointing right out of the screen. And as the um, at the end of the shot, the gun jerked. The finger was on the trigger. The gun jerked up, and a white flash came out of the muzzle, which covered the screen. In other words, the Liberal Party of Canada just shot you, the viewer. And that is most definitely a threat about, it was a threat saying, you elect Stephen Harper, you're going to get shot because everyone will be carrying handguns because there won't be any gun restri restrictions anymore. None of which is true. But it was certainly designed to instill fear and influence people through that fear Stephen Harper lost that election, but the Liberals didn't win it either. It was a minority government, thank God. We're going to see more of this because you can be rest assured that Andrew Scheer, the new leader of the federal conservatives, is target number one by the Liberals for attempts of defining him. We see it provincially here in Alberta as well. The NDP here in Alberta talks constantly about Jason Kenney's so-called social conservative views and the danger that he represents to the homosexual community, the danger that he represents to um, abortion rights. Not that abortion rights have anything to do provincially, but that's what the NDP does. And that's what the Liberal Party of Canada does. They use terrorism to influence people. They frighten people to influence them, to, de help, to help them, uh, to make them decide not to vote for conservative candidates. Antifa is a, another example in the States of a violent group. And they don't even need, actually, quite frankly, the violence isn't even needed anymore. What does Antifa do? All they need to do is say that they're coming. And all of a sudden, you've got a whole bunch of security showing up and a whole bunch of things happening and a whole bunch of people um, getting nervous. And quite likely, a whole bunch of people choose not to attend the event simply because Antifa is there. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to get pepper sprayed. Actually, quite frankly, if Antifa is coming, I'm just more likely to show up just to stand up to them. And that's what we need to do. That is what we need to do. Terrorists are bullies. And we all know, like, and well, let's go the other way. Bullies in a schoolyard. Is it a bully? A schoolyard bully is a terrorist. They, he influences or she influences through fear. Fear of humiliation, fear of reprisal, fear of physical violence, whatever. But they are terrorists. And how do you deal with a bully? You stand up to them. That's how you deal with bullies. And that's how you deal with terrorists. You stand up to them. So if Antifa says they're coming, don't stay home. Show up. Get in there, you know, just and ignore them. Do your thing. And if they attack you, fight back tooth and nail. I'm not telling you not to defend yourself, but I'm telling you, you show up, you stand up to them. If a liberal or an NDP person tells you the conservatives will do X, Y, and Z, vote conservative just to annoy them. The only way we are going to stop this, this cycle of terrorism, this cycle of violence, this cycle of fear-mongering, is by standing against it and doing the opposite every time of what the terrorists want us to do.
So if a liberal tells you to vote liberal because a conservative will um, take restrictions off firearms, vote conservative just to show that they're wrong. If an NDP says that uh, gay straight alliances will be shut down under a conservative government, vote conservative just to prove them wrong. And eventually, eventually, they'll give up. And maybe, just maybe, they'll start raising the in more important intellectual arguments again. And if you're on Twitter, or if you're on Facebook, and you are attacking somebody because they don't agree with you, if you're calling them a fascist, that also makes you a terrorist. Stop doing it. The more times that I get called a fascist or a terrorist or a or rather a bigot, a homophobe, one of the um, the various acronym that I've came up uh, that uh, the various the various uh, many different words that people have used to describe those with conservative views or people they disagree with, it boils down to the uh, the word rashobismi, R A S. H-O-B-I-S-M-I. Rasho Bismi. Racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, misogynist. Or I, I missed one. Racist, sexist, homophobe, bigot, Islamophobe, misogynist. Rasho Bismi. Remember that word. It's a useful one. I know that um, other people have come up with a different one. I think uh, Dennis Prager came up with six herb. Um, it's not a bad word. But I think Rasho Bismi is probably a little bit easier to remember because A, it's pronounceable, and every word within and everybody knows. Because um, Dennis Prager's ver version, um, Six Herb, involves xenophobia, xenophobic. And I don't think that a leftist who is d engaging in this name calling is capable of even understanding what the word xenophobia means. So. Why don't we try Rasho Bismi for a while? I kind of like that as well. Partly because I came up with it, and I'm biased towards it. So every time that you're referred to as one of those words Rasho, in, in Rasho Bismi, or Six Herb, you stand up to them, fight back, tooth and nail, and don't let them win. Because the only way we're going to stop the terrorism or stop the fear-mongering and stop the cycle of violence is by refusing to back down. And that's it for me for today, Friday, October the 13th. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, you can find me on Minds.com. You can find me here on Facebook, of course. You can find me on YouTube, which is where the video feed comes from. You can find me on Patreon. And if you feel like you like what you see and you want to help things get better and better and better, Please do send me some, um, send me a sponsorship, become a patron. It can cost you as little as a dollar a month, and that'll give you access to pre recorded, uh, more involved and more in depth stuff, um, pre edited and, and such. The live stuff I'm always going to try and keep free, but the um, more in depth researched uh, material and the uh, and whatnot will be behind a paywall, I think. It's going to make life a little bit easier, but. Anything that you decide to send my way is greatly appreciated. As always, it's never expected, but always appreciated. And with that, I'll talk to you Monday. Talk to you then, and I'm Steve Britton.